I am unashamed. What about you? So what did y'all do yesterday, Dad? Out there? Well, we had visitors from all over the United States, about seven or eight states. What's the big farming country uh, where Tony's from? Iowa. Nebraska. Iowa. As we call we have, it, I, Iowa. We have Iowans in the room for later. Yeah. Iowa, yeah, there were there were some from Iowa. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky, I remember some of them saying, and a few other. There's about seven or eight states, but uh, I just told them about Jesus, pointed them to him, and I think it was three. Three responded. So were they podcast listeners? Yep. Under yep. shame, so. Yep. Young bucks, yep. for the most part. Younger, you know, 25 to 20 to 30, whatever, but a lot longer than that. I don't know that we've done an official count of our audience, but it seems like to me from as many young men as I talk to that listen to the podcast, that's kind of our audience. Did you do an official count? You know, I don't know. We can't. You talk about hard to figure out analytics on a, who knows? Yeah. My, my Kellett mind. Kellett was is... there. And, uh, Speaking he of, was. Yeah, Kellett was there. He that's vis- a not a young buck. <laughs> yeah, he visited us yesterday, you know, but... Uh, we keep it simple, you know. You <laughs> well, know, if you got people from six different states showing up, you must be doing something. Yep. I don't know what popped in my head. When Every one of what? these epistles launched by laying out the gospel first, starting in Romans. Paul, servant of Christ, set apart for the gospel of God. First, first, first paragraph: the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophet. It was, it's all based, and it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times it's brought up before he gets to the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all. So that's all. kind of your, so you've decided that's your zone, right? That's, we're going to, we're going to. I've heard you give the. We're going to open it. Everything yeah. starts with the gospel. I like it. Because you think about it, without it, you're not going to get any coherence here. You know, so he starts with that. All the way to Coloss- the Colossians, he calls the gospel the word of truth. We're not getting to Colossians today, but that is yeah. in the hopper. It's coming yeah. up. It's coming up. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And and I told y'all before, the second bite at the apple of preaching for me um, as a volunteer second now. second bite of the apple. Yeah. Well, I, the first bite I was a pay. Uh, the first bite of an apple was not was a negative thing. <laughs> well, mm. That doesn't have to be. <laughs> Well, it was. Well, I'm not in the garden. This oh. is, I mean, this is just second bite of the apple. Oh. I'm saying I get a I get a second chance to preach. <laughs> I don't know without work, without having to get paid. But in my second, my mindset is wherever you're at in the text and teaching it or preaching it, Jesus has to be a focal point always. That way, you never lose sight of the big picture. His identity. Well, I agree with that. What he said, what he did. What he's now doing and what he will do, it's it's all that's pretty well the starting on all these epistles. That's where the where he starts, yeah. and basically that's where he ends. Jesus' famous famous uh, simple look at the Bible. It's he's coming, he's here, yep. he's coming back, right? I like that. Yep. People need to realize the reason I do that is because they look at the most books are not a revealing manuscript about a being that's alive spread out over several thousand years well yeah Yeah. i mean most books you think oh let me read that i got it yeah it was okay (laughs) Uh, you know whatever (laughs) or it's a rule book tell me what i need to do yeah this seven ways to success you start with the unique thing no one's ever seen jesus christ because he was there but he hadn't become flesh yet jesus is coming from Genesis 3.15 all the way to Matthew. Mm-hmm. Matthew, everybody's looking around. They haven't heard from God in 400 years. Not a word. Yeah. Just stopped. Well, you know, you say it and you say, yeah, well, right now, if everything's shut down, we've had, we've never heard of Jesus and it's 2022. Well, we say, yeah, but he's coming though. But he's going to show up about 2026. You know, 2020, you're like, what? He said, yeah, it's about 400 years. He'll show back up. And the first thing they see, instead of Jesus, they look at somebody more ragged looking than old Jay sitting there right now. 
<laughs> He's robbing you beehives. You're calling me ragged. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you just appeared and started hollering about no repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, everybody would have looked around and said, who in the world is that dude running down grasshoppers and robbing beehives to survive? <laughs> And that's how God did that. Well, you just think about it. If you wait all these years, the prophets, what they said, he would come, you know, and Jesus would be the king. All those verses that you read about, all of that evidence leading up to it, you would think it would have started with somebody other than the raggediest looking dude you've ever seen. Well, we're walking. talking about being a man. Ah, there's a man. There's what a man. are you that's talking about? So, so, Phil, here's the first verse I'd like to read today. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke there. Yeah. Let that apply where it needs to apply. of fizzle out there. <laughs> no, I'm saying if you're looking at me saying I'm ragged. But how you get to the book of Acts, you say first, <laughs> first statement, right first back. statement, <laughs> verses one through three, after his suffering, you say, well, you just read about it, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why well, repeat it four times? You say, so nobody can miss it. Well, So, you, so here he, comes he, Luke. It's about a person. Yeah. And he, he, he starts there. And the last thing he got the Apostle Paul saying, boldly and without hindrance, when you get all the way to 28 chapters later, the last statement is just like the first one. The last statement is, uh, without hindrance, boldly and without hindrance, he, the Apostle Paul, preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it, it's, it's all condensed, condensed down. So you, you turn a page. You say, well, I wonder what happens. What's going, what's going to be talked about this time? Well, Romans, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel. Then you start, you just start down through the list. First Corinthians, <clears throat> I, I, I was here just to tell They're you good. about Jesus. I, Jesus, them crucified. That's what I'm doing here. Right. And it all just fits together just like that. Once the rank and file persons, when they say, I, I don't know the scriptures, I mean, it's it's solid. Jesus came in flesh, died, was buried, and raised from the dead from one end to the other. Yep. But they just somehow or another, they don't just put that together and stick to that. Yeah. You don't have to go out here somewhere else and get, you know, get, get some kind of brain in the scriptures. Just read them, and they all say the same thing. The same story is said over and over and over, where nobody with any kind of open heart at all would miss it. <clears throat> But they do miss it because, they you do. know, they exchange the truth of it for a lie. Right. That, that's in Romans. They, right. Three times the word exchange is used. And everyone, every time it says it, uh, they exchange the glory of the immortal God. You say, I wonder what they replaced him with. See if this sounds familiar. And this was written a couple of thousand years ago. They exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man, birds, animals, and reptiles. They will bow down to the animal world and birds. I mean, bow down to it, build a, themselves, build a big monument to it, and bow down to it. And you say, there's no God. I mean, we're, we're, we're bowed down to created creation. And we got a whole movement in the country now. It's all about that right there. Mm. They bow down to end it to save the planet. We've got to do. He talks about three verses. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. That's twice. Worship and serve created things rather than the creator. You're like, surely not. So that's what they did. You turn a page. Because of that, the women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones. Uh-oh. Here all that comes. Mm. You know, the lesbian crowd, they're all in there. You say, and this was written how long ago? A couple of thousand years. By the way, God has not spoken since. God hasn't said a word that mid-first century. Last book, Revelation, you say, any other words from God? No. Except he through us. That's the scoop. Yeah. Well, Take it or yeah. leave it. Because I think once the Holy Spirit was poured out, then all of a sudden... He, he uses people. Yeah. 
the stories. We're the ambassadors. We're the ambassadors. Yeah, we're the, we're the, the ambassadors. Was our whole thing from second. We're the go between. Correct. The ministers. The, 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 so was that your lesson yesterday, Dad? That's Did my you, lesson. Yeah. That's, my, that's my lesson. And when you say that, you say, I wonder if I had to work. I saw three just say they're visiting. I saw three yesterday. And another one said, I'm up next week. They had already baptized two or three, and I think one more, there's four of them, <clears throat> one more come up and said, will you baptize me on the river? I said, did you see what them three people just did? He said, yeah. I said, why well, go to the river? We got water here. We got a pool of water right back up there. I said, get, out, get them clothes off and get you some old clothes on. I said, there's some up there. I said, Tony, keep staying up there a little bit. We got another one. <laughs> and he wanted me to drive all the way down there to the river, but... I said, he thought it would be a little more official if I did it, but it, but not true. All right. It's never His about faith the, was going to save him, not yeah, me. It's never I, about I, the baptizer. Sure. Baptizee. So, Jace, I was curious because on the last podcast, you were saying that you were going on a speaking trip, and you and Missy were doing it together. So we I've been did. waiting all week to hear how that played well, itself out. I had an idea. So two or three days for the event, I don't know if I shared this. I said, let's do a QA. and a Yeah, that's what you shared. That was your so plan. So we did the Q&A. All right. And it started off great because I I well, thought, well. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it de-evolved into something. Well, about the fourth question, she... They asked a question. I forgot what the question was, but she kind of looked at me. Now, the first three questions, because they would say, Missy, the wife interviewer would ask Missy a question. Then, oh, so it was a husband and wife interview asking team. Okay. And then he would ask me a question. Well, the first three questions they asked her, she answered them. And, uh, and quite lengthy answers, I mm -hmm. noticed. But they were good. Yeah. So the fourth one, they asked her, she kind of looked at me. I took that as a signal <laughs> that I got nothing because she didn't look at me on the first three. <laughs> so I said, well, I just interrupted her. I mean, she didn't say anything. I didn't interrupt her. I just jumped in, in Jumped in on her question. Because you took the look as a, you take this one. Jill. I'm a man. My wife is in trouble. <laughs> I will rise up in this moment <laughs> that her mind has gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> so she basically said what she said, what started all this, because I told the story last time when we got in the vehicle, the first time we tried to do an event together, I would talk, she would talk, I would talk, she would talk, I would talk. We got to the vehicle and she said, can I talk now? <laughs> so she said that after I answered the question, she said, can I answer the question now? Which everybody laughed. <laughs> the hardest they laughed the whole time. So I thought, okay, that was funny. But once again, once again, she's like, missed You're, the signal. Because they said, they said, well, why don't you share Jesus? Because this was not at a church event or anything. So they wanted me to share Jesus. This was kind of an outdoor. It was at in a civic center, yeah. but, but it was like people had boats and motors and. There were the treasure hunter crowds, and they—they, yeah. they, I think they said they bowled. It was some number that was crazy. I don't know how many crawfish, but hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds, which I ate some. It was good. Yeah, barbecue. Where were you? I, Texas, right? I was in uh, Beaumont, Texas. Oh Beaumont. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's like Louisiana West down there. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a good event. So then I got up in twenty minutes and shared Jesus. And it, it's amazing because usually I talk for longer than that yeah. in a speech, but we had done the Q&A because it was about family. And I thought it went pretty good other than this one bobble that <laughs> she, she got offended and threw me under the bus. <laughs> well, what would you think? They asked me a question one. and she looked over at me. I thought that means take, I mean, take the torch. But no, it didn't mean that. It just meant she looked over at me before she was fixed to speak. <laughs> So bad call. But it made it funny. So but then when I got up and shared Jesus, I used that point. I, I did the old uh I mean I said a few few introductory things that I, I don't even remember, but I do remember, you know, tell them to close their eyes and picture God. Yeah. I was like, What do y'all see? Somebody saw an old man, somebody saw a light. That's about it. There was probably a couple thousand people there. 
Yeah, nobody, maybe they were just nervous to talk. Nah, nobody wants to give the wrong answer. That's why people yeah. are scared. I said that. I yeah. said, oh, yeah, I don't want to be wrong. I said, how Hang about... Hang let's take a break. So, Dad, you're in, um, right now, you're in May Hall season. Uh, yep. Getting their May Hall jelly ready. How long does it take a May Hall tree to produce from, like... About, about 10 years. 10 years. Wow. If you dig them up in the woods and plant them, which I did... I just did that so I wouldn't have to go that deep in the woods to get it. I got you. Well, and you got them right there, which is good. So uh, one of our sponsors is a is a company called Fast Growing Trees. That's why I was curious about that. Uh, most people don't want to have to wait 10 years to you know get some new trees in their flower yeah. bed. So these guys are going to be able to do it quickly, which is what we want. They're available 24-7, uh, fastgrowingtrees.com. Uh, they curate thousands of plants. Uh, I've used them. Lisa and I have, have them in my flower bed down at the southern layer. Over 1 million home gardeners have already seen what fast-growing trees can do for them. So we want you to check these guys out. Uh, you'll like it. They have a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, which means you can trust everything will be healthy for years to come, and my trees are doing great. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson. You're going to get 15% off your entire order. So that's 15% off fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson. Check them out. I said, how about this? I think most of you might have seen nothing. <laughs> they all laughed. When I said that. <laughs> but it's true. When you try to picture God, well, you, you see nothing because faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Right. So when I got to the Bible part, I did the Jesus is coming. Genesis, Malachi, yep. that you refer. That's why when y'all said that, I thought I just did that. Matthew to John, he's here. Acts to Revelation, he's coming back. Then I kind of went through a picture of Jesus. You know, in Colossians, where we're going to be, he's the image of the invisible God. Well, just think about that phrase. So if you if you close your eyes and try to picture God, you should conjure up some version of Jesus, who was a man Yep. over 2,000 years ago, but was here. We know what most Israelites look like, I guess. Right. I mean, Isaiah said he was not like some spectacular... Beauty. Not at all. Yeah. Middle Eastern, and dark the, hair, dark eyes. You had the verse about they Probably. pricked his beard. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. I mean, he was a carpenter. He roamed around. I mean, he had rough hands. He grew up with woodwork. Kind of a vagabond, I guess. I mean, he didn't really have a place to lay his head. Yep. So we get it. And so I did that kind of with the red letters. But then, so I, I put a... My exclamation point this time was a little different because it was actually from something we did on the podcast. I wound up, I went through hurriedly like who Jesus is and what he did and off the top of my head went through the whole book of John, but just like rapid fire. I mean, like he had an encounter with Nicodemus and he's like, I mean, he was willing to say things that we just wouldn't think of. You know, a religious leader comes to you. The last thing you would probably say is you need to be born again. Start all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does this? You know, John yeah. 4, the woman at the well. And yeah, Nicodemus asked the perfect reply. Yeah. Any of us would say, like, well, how can I be born? How can I be born again? I can't go back where I'm I started. my mama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Great John question. like eight, the woman caught in adultery and he yep. took up for her. Yep. And, and, but he said, go leave your life of sin. John nine, the man born blind or, you know, the kid yep. born blind. Why did this happen? I mean, why did bad things happen? I went through all that. This happened. So, so you did a time. little journey through I John. I went all the way and I got to 20 and where the, uh, where he appeared, where the, uh, two disciples, Peter and John ran to the tomb. And I did that little thing because they saw the grave clothes. They saw the, uh, something else folded the burial attire. And it, then that, that verse says they saw and believed. Yeah. Well, they actually didn't see. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. They didn't see him. You know, I, so I went back to the close your eyes and picture God, because then you had these three. Remember the podcast we did? These three responses. They saw they they put because it says they still hadn't figured out that Jesus had to be raised from the dead. Right. But they put all the pieces together, and then Mary, she's like, "Are you the gardener?" Which is almost quite humorous. <laughs> 
<laughs> but but in real life, people have a misconception of who Jesus is. Right. They think he's just the gardener. Right. Perhaps. Maybe. That somebody wrote a story about, and, oh, it just morphed. I, right. I really think that's what they think. Remember, Thomas said, I got to see it. Yeah, I got to see it. And I the... said, a lot of y'all are like that. If God would just show me a miracle, then I'd believe. Or if he would just you know, tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, I will burn you. I said, then I'll, that's all it takes. You'd be. <laughs> but then he he says that blessed are those, you know, who saw, because that's why you believe. But blessed are those who haven't seen yeah. and believe. So I, I kept going back to that, this, you can't see this. It is through faith. And uh, We think about, though, Jay, that one statement. So everybody that's ever lived up until Jesus got here, and he was only on the earth 33 years. He only was public for three years. So everybody that ever lived up to him, anybody that believed in God and that there was a Messiah coming, did it not see in him. And now for 2,000 years, looking back, Everybody that believes doesn't see him. Doesn't see him. That's why I said it's okay. It's okay for your mind to go blank. But you need, because I get to my invitation, y'all heard me speak. Because I don't I do not do the, you know, let's everybody raise your hand and make a commit. Because people do that and then they walk out of the door and ain't nothing changed. They got caught up in a moment. So I'm I like, think look, the Hebrew writer go, go home. It. I said, go home and read the book of John. Because somebody put Jesus' statements in red letters. You can actually get a visual of how of who Jesus is in your mind. If you read the book. If you read those red letters over and over. And then you form your opinion, not not because the preacher said or you was raised this way. You form an opinion on whether Jesus should be Lord of your life. That, yeah. That's how this works. That's right? like when the people say, I, I don't, I, I'd love to just be able to tell people about Jesus. Y'all seem to do it and you don't even st stammer at all. I said, we trained ourselves to do that. They said, what? I said, solid food, the scriptures, it's like the book of John. If you will dwell on those scriptures, you're feeding on the scriptures. Solid foods for the mature, who by constant use, constant use, have trained themselves for all the ones who say, but if I knew the Bible verses like y'all did, I would follow Jesus, but I don't know the Bible verses. Oh, yeah, I got it. I, that, and I'm trying look, to get them. That, uh, that, and the that Hebrew argument won't hold water. Yeah, know? the Hebrew writer said, solid foods for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to do something profound. It, I, I added that. Not profound. They just feed on the scriptures, and by them, they can distinguish good from evil. Right. I well, mean, I want to remind you. talk about you. simplicity. It, it's not rocket science. No, it's. Well, right. I want to remind you of two things. And I know we were going to talk about something else today, but this this, this gets my blood boiling. <laughs> well, whatever you but want to have. Want John to say, 5. Though. We got plenty of time to talk John about. John 5, speaking of John 39. He, and, and by he, the way, before you read it, Jase, when you think about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're all obviously great eyewitness accounts. But the reason why we all think John is probably the best one, especially for someone that's a non believer. Is because you mentioned, Jace, the interactions Jesus had in the book of John were much more than believers. When the other gospels, they're with the Pharisees, religious leaders. And that gets a little bit wonky, you know, to dive into all that. But if you just want pure, unadulterated, this is I what agree. who Jesus is, John's the best place. Excellent point. But in John 5 39, he he's chastising. Who is he chastising here? Are these religious leaders? Uh the point I'm making is he says you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't you think that? Right. But it says these are the scriptures that testify about me. Yeah. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So when Phil was saying that, I thought, you know, if someone asked you to introduce your wife, you wouldn't say, well, I don't know where my notebook is about her. <laughs> I, I was keeping Wait, a, a. Can I can I look up her bio? Right yeah, let there? me look up her bio. I just don't know. Look, I can't remember her bio. She needs I, some research. Yeah, let's do some research. To me, that's that's how silly that argument mm, is. Yeah. Oh, of course you would know. Well, if you haven't been experienced, that's why I was referring to this earlier. If you haven't experienced Jesus, well, you're gonna have a hard time sharing. Yeah, if you don't know him, and you're not sure he knows you. Well, of course you can't share. If you're just looking at this as a book that you must get all the knowledge of, 
you're never going to hit that because there's so many details and yeah. hills and valleys along the way of that. So I think it's important. And by the way, I don't know why this popped in my head, but it was unforgiving. When you said uh, there was a guy from Iowa in the Midwest, who, what was your point on that? They were they were visiting from Iowa. Yeah. It made me think of that movie. Remember when he said that, that guy said, uh, he said, I thought you were dead. And he's like, well, I thought I was dead once, but I woke up. I was in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my head. <laughs> As in unforgiven. <laughs> I wanted to say it then, but it took me twenty minutes to circle back to <laughs> I remember that. That's yeah. right. That was uh was that Morgan Freeman that said that? No, it was uh he doesn't do any movies anymore. Gene Hackman. Oh yeah. Gene that, Hackman. That's right, that's mm-hmm. right. Uh yeah. Curly Bell. Yeah, I was like, that's one of the greatest lines. Oh, that's good. Movie. I forgot about that. I mean, it's nothing personal against Nebraska. He just happened to be there. But Yeah. Nebraska's, yeah, it's hard to get in out there. Somebody was asking me to come, and I was going to fly to Denver and drive five hours. I was like. Yeah, every time I've done that... an event there, it, it's a nightmare getting there. Yeah, I was like, man, I've never, uh, like, a, they must not have well, a lot of Well, because I think there's only two big cities there, and the rest of it is just every man for himself. Oh, I guess a little so. small community. Remember, we hunted in Nebraska. Oh, out there. I mean, Platte River, which was a one beautiful place to shoot ducks. Yeah, I mean, it was you, a, you talked about that for many years. That oh, must you have just been. didn't see it where we were hunting ducks. There was no civilization much, Yeah, which was preferable for us. But I mean, just because the beauty of it all. And- I thought I was dead. I woke up. I was in Nebraska. I have to remember that. I forgot that. Let's take another break. So, Jace, how are you sleeping these days? Because uh, I slept for two days. Uh, I got up and did the basic essentials. But because you got a little baby around now, that that kind of I know. But I hadn't slept in three or four months. So. <laughs> Last two nothing days. to do with the baby, right? Last Just, two days. I've, I've been, I one of the things that. that makes uh, sleep great, and Jace can attest to this, and so can I. I'm not sure if Dad has one or not, but we, we have uh, – there's one of our sponsors is a, a company called Helix Sleep. And uh, they have these personalized mattresses. They're made in America, shipped straight to your door, uh, free no-contact delivery, free returns, and you get a 100-night sleep trial. Um, Jace went online, took a quiz, so did I, to kind of – you know, do you like it firmer? Do you like it softer? You know, so they they match it to you and what you like, and uh, and we love them, right, Jason? I mean, it's yeah. a it's a it's a great mattress. We got them in our houses, a ten year warranty. Uh, like I said, a hundred night risk free. So if you don't love it, they'll come pick it up, Dad. But you're going to love it. Uh, they're offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our unashamed listeners. If you go to Helix H E L I X HelixSleep dot com slash unashamed. That's helixsleep.com slash unashamed, $200 off, two free pillows, and a great night's sleep. So so the the plan was, and I guess we're still going to do it. Yeah, let's stick to the plan. Is uh, We're going to talk. We got a guest. Uh, it's actually here, but he's going to be on the next podcast. So today, before we get into a new study, um, I had I kind of came across a lesson that I'd done a, a few years ago at a men's thing. And I thought, man, that would be good. Cause like I said, most of our, we have a lot, our female audience is really growing, which we appreciate all you ladies for listening, but we're still a lot of men listen to our podcast. And so I had had this lesson days where it was the, 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 the I think their theme was called a, a man approved by God. And so you somebody give me a theme. So I just started kind of studying, you know, I started mm-hmm. looking and I found this word, approved by God was was quite a bit in the New Testament. I mean, it came up several times. Which is a which is a great phrase. That would be it a is. positive thing to be approved by God. Right. So it kind of became the perfect challenge cuz like, well, what what would an approved man of God look like? So that kind of launched me into my study. I was just thinking like a stamp, you know, you're walking up approved by God. Approved by God. Well, actually, so the Greek word for this is called dokimos, this word for approved. And it's several. I'll read you a couple of illustrations, and then, then we'll get into talking about it. One is in First Thessalonians 2, 4. Paul said, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by God, dokimos. And the, the word dokimos meant authentic, integrity. Like So they take a coin 
and you know you see somebody bite it to see if the metal's real. So <laughs> I, think, I don't think I don't think that's. A, I'm in the treasure hunt world. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they do that, but it's. But in the old or, days, like that's what the word meant. This this is an approved coin. Like, yeah, this was. Yeah, if this it is cracks real. when you bite it, no, no good. <laughs> Well, you always see them in the old westerns, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like we did those promos for uh, the show we got coming up. <clears throat> they, I mean, they had some kind of old coin they brought out, and I was like, it's an old gold coin. And I thought, where did you get this? And they said, oh, it's a fake. We we made it look like a real coin. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought, wow. Which is, so, Doki most you do this all the time. You have to... You researched to find yeah. out if what you found is the real deal, well, right? Jeff, genuine Jeff and or I, not. Genuine, Jeff, yeah. Jeff and I was hunting in around Austin in a church parking lot, <clears throat> and uh, I forgot what it was called, but Jeff finds this. It was some kind of Spanish gold that, and I was familiar with the coin because it was like the rare of rare worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and Jeff finds one. Really? And, and, well, it looked just like one. And I was like, what in the world is this doing in this church party? I mean, Jeff's freaking out. He's, you know, like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay off all my, you know, whatever. I mean, he's already. <laughs> he's already paying off debt. Oh, I'm yeah. A we <laughs> took a picture, but we sent it to Murray, you know, who's kind of the expert. And he's like, I don't think that, I think that's a fake. And Jeff was like, what are you talking about? I mean, it's like he never considered. Which is why you need Murray, by the way, yeah. on the scene. I mean, he's just looking at a picture. Jeff's like, Phew. I mean, ain't nobody going to do that. We were looking it up online. It did look just like it. Right. And I uh, took it down there. No, it's fake. <laughs> I was like, what do you think? <laughs> Somebody put this out here right down the street from But it is, it is an interesting point that when you find Jesus, you know, seek and you find, when you seek him out and you find him, I mean, it, it's... Uh, because there's a lot of false prophets running around. Yeah. Oh, that's it. You, you say, you know, you know, they're, they're, it's just down to one individual who ever lived on the earth. So well, you see right. why the you, there's a lot is, of ways you, you can thought. miss him. So you see why this concept is so important. You're oh. right. Because there's so oh, much yeah. fake. But I think people think Jesus is fake. That's right. right. They think he's just a mannequin. Yeah. So created. so down, I was in. Uh, he's, they say he's someone we dreamed up. Right, exactly. we dream. need a crutch or whatever. You're weak oh, people. Who well, need let's just show you how how this works. And the, so my neighbor out in Alabama, he comes over. He's a fisherman. Y'all would love him. He's you know just salt of the earth guy. He said, "Well, our problems are solved." I said, what, "What's what you got, Eddie?" He said, "Well, I just got a call from Publishers Clearinghouse. I won two and a half million dollars and a brand new Mercedes. All I got to do is go down to Walmart." get a gift card and give this guy the number and he's going to bring me my money. Uh, I said, how much is the gift card? He said, $500. He said, our problems are solved. So he's laughing. So the guy calls him while he's telling me this. He's some person, you know, and he had already had it happen years ago and he actually called because he was like, Jeff, he got excited at first. He said, well, you know, Publishers Clearing House, that's a real deal. So he calls them and they're like, no, sir, we don't call. You know, we show up at your house with a giant check with the vehicle, then then you can get excited. So this guy's a scammer, obviously. So this guy, he said his name was something Sears, Dan Sears, but he's obviously he's a foreigner. <laughs> he's trying to sound American. So he puts him on speaker, and I'm laughing so hard because he's like, now he's negotiating. He said, well, you know, I, man, I'm hard, down on my luck. He said, I'm over here at my neighbor's now trying to see if he'll loan me a little money. He said, would you deliver it for less than five? <laughs> so he winds up getting him down to 50 bucks. And he kept, he kept, he'd say, well, let me see if I can pull this together. Call me back. So he's just like toying with this guy, which was really funny because the guy is so excited because he thinks he's got a dumb redneck that's actually going to give him some money to not have the money delivered. And so he finally gets it down to 50 bucks. And then finally he just you know quit taking the calls. The guy called 24 times after that trying to get it. But I meant for 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. He spent an afternoon trying to hoodwink this guy to whatever he could get. But in some 50 bucks in some countries, you know. I guess so. But I just thought, you know, you could just work. Like, you could probably earn that 50 bucks. I mean, I don't know what country it's from, but sure. I'm like, well, I mean, if you just spent four hours. 
But it it's it highlights now, if you hadn't got the memo, good work is hard to find. It's becoming <laughs> well, more true. difficult by the day. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're and good workers. And if you're looking for a scam, just get up in the morning. We look to your right and left because there's plenty of them around. <laughs> <laughs> but think about how many people probably fall for that. Some old person that oh, you know. Yeah, Missy's grandma before she died, she was. They finally had to just seize all her assets because she was. They were just. Scanning. Oh, they call yeah. Because once you give once, they have a little network. I don't know how they know who did what. But see, they appeal to that base human instinct that you can get something for nothing. You know, yeah. oh man, you get two and a half million dollars in a car. I mean, what if it's true? Yep. You know, is it is it worth taking that chance? But I don't know. It's, it's the old lost it, treasure, Jason. Yes, yeah, lost treasures. If you have to pay money to get money, that should be your well. That should be your your rule right there. <laughs> Funny. You're giving me two point five million, but I got to give you five hundred. Well, Eddie, Eddie said, if you'll just bring the car and the money, I'll I'll give it to you. <laughs> Let's see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then the guy's like, I'll deliver it at 7 o'clock. Eddie said, you got my address? And he said, oh, no, I forgot to ask. That's what I'm (laughs) saying. I mean, it's so dumb that. Well, it it was an afternoon of entertainment for me. I actually had just one old guy on planet Earth that they had known my background and the programs I don't listen to. And I I don't have a computer nor a cell phone. But you do answer your phone. But somebody somebody else was looking at, they said, we didn't know that you were selling marijuana oil. I said, I'm <laughs> doing CBD. what? They said, they've got it here where you're yeah, selling I read marijuana somewhere, oil. I read somewhere huh. that people are now scamming on the lines that are attached to the walls because that's the only thing left. The yeah. only people left that are doing it are older people. Right. And so there's where all the scams So if you can get a landline, you, you get a landline you got a fish. and you get somebody to answer it, that it's more scamming going on there than normal phone calls. So, let's so remember that next time your phone rings. Yeah. Oh, what are you talking about? It's like this. Uh, <laughs> most of what them, four to five rings, and then they hang up. Somebody that's, out that's for a That's him buck. looking at the number and turn. Somebody out for a buck. Let's take a break. So I told Eddie, Eddie's a fisherman. I said, Eddie, and we had been fishing that day. We caught some pompano uh, off the beach, which are delicious, by the way. And uh, I said, Eddie, you you realize that you're a fisherman. I said, that guy, he thinks he's got him a pompano on the line. You're you're the pompano. And because you're answering his calls and you're, you know, fake negotiating. I said, the problem is, you know, you're going to get right. He's going to get right up to the bank. And then he's going to flop off in the surf, which is what happened to us that day. I said, that's what's going to happen. And that's what happened. So Clark. back to your point with the approved, that that would that would, that would would kind of pretty well tell the story, the ones that are not approved. <clears throat> which really was Paul's whole point. Yeah. James used the same word in James 1.12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test— in other words, that's the same dokimos. And when you're under a trial, that proves whether you're really authentic or not, right? Life itself is but one big one big test. What's right. the big argument against God being real? What's bad things. Number? Bad things. Like, to get well, people? if you are approved by God, why are all these bad things happening? Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. So we're like, well, to show us that we're not God, and we need Him. Yeah. And to prove that whether you're going through a trial or not, you still believe in him and you trust him. Well, because we're getting back to the gospel now. If you if he came down here and took away all our sins and even offered us a, a way to start over, which is what he told Nicodemus, and you can't die. Yeah, that's the best part, by the way. I mean, whatever trial you went through, as bad as it may be, it's okay now. Yeah, you know, it, it, you, you're, you're me, me and I, me and a brother were talking the other night, and I said I've, I've always wanted to. We were actually talking about manly things because I had a pastor. This is a crazy story, but since we're talking about men, there was a pastor who's the most in shape pastor. You know, because most time people when they think of pastors, they just think of these. <laughs> What are you trying to say, Dave? Well, big, big I'm just bellies. saying. Big, big, big fat bellies. people. Well, I mean, they're just not somebody who's just going to, you know, like <laughs> run a chainsaw. and Maybe eat a lot of fried chicken. You know, but this this pastor here, I mean, it's quite clear. 
I mean, he could whip your tail for scrap, for a physical altercation. But he, we had a funny moment in our relationship, and because when he was first a pastor, uh, he called me one time, and I'll tell you this story. I, I won't tell his name because this is a little embarrassing. But he called me one time, and he said, didn't you tell me one time that you were asked to uh, pray over a house? And what happened is Missy, when she started this charity slash business, not charity, started a business to help women who had been oppressed or, or just sex needed a, yeah, yeah, through sex trafficking and different things, just to try to give them a step up. Uh, they had, because the group that brought them to the Lord were connecting with Missy, and it was like once they get out of prison, they right. get a job. Because you need a job. Well, and- the people that brought them to the Lord, they were like, Let's pray for this house, the actual structure. And so he was he was kind of, but I, when I told him the story, he was a little confused or what, because he was like, didn't y'all cast out some demons out of a house? You know, I was like, well. <laughs> that shows it, you how story grows, right? <laughs> exactly. I said, it felt a little like that. I said, like, when we got there, because I mean, they were, because they were way more, this group was a little more charismatic right. than I am. Right. I mean, they, they, were, they were doing some things, oh, you yeah. know, but it was. Basically a worship, and it was a, it was it was great. And some of the women shared, and it was real graphic but powerful. And it was focused on Jesus. So he was like, "Oh, I said, but but I mentioned this verse. I said, but this there's, remember that when Jesus said that that the uh, he had laid his hands on his disciples, but they couldn't drive out the demons. And he said, well, this kind can only be driven out by prayer and fasting." So I mentioned that. So anyway, long story short. So he he goes with the, another pastor who was kind of the lead on it. And he said he he prayed and fasted because he wasn't sure what he was getting into. Yeah. But he said based on what happened. So that night I forgot all about we had this conversation, but I I was in my truck and he sent me a picture. But it was a weird picture. And Missy happened to be sitting right beside me. And it was just he had shorts on, and it was just his legs and and shorts. And but she saw it when it like clicked on my phone. She's like, "Why is a pastor <laughs> sending you a picture of his lower body?" <laughs> I said, "That's a good question." <laughs> I, mean, I said, "Look, this is not normal. This is you know just, you know what we call that D E D. Don't ever." Do. I just thought. <laughs> she said, "I mean, did his phone just accidentally?" <laughs> I was like, this guy's a man of God. He he wouldn't be like that. And she's like, she's like, what are you going to say? And I went, you got any ideas? <laughs> I don't know how to respond to this. Question and, mark, question mark, baby. And Missy said, I think I'd just say good for you. <laughs> so I put good for you. <laughs> and so when I did that, he typed back, there's a story. And I thought, oh, of course, there's okay, a story. There's a story. I looked at the picture again, awkward. And <laughs> so he calls me later and says, "Here's what happened." He's like, I'm "Hang afraid. on, hang on, let's take a break." He said, "I prayed and fasted. I show up at the church building to meet the other pastor. We're going over to this house, demon possessed house that some members have asked us to come pray over." He said. I get out, I park my truck. I was going to get in the other pastor's truck. And he's like, didn't really think about it, but just, I guess I had a little gas, I thought. And he said, next thing I know, and and <laughs> when, he, when he said this, I lost it. He went, Jace, I saw myself. <laughs> I mean, this is the most in-shape guy I know. <laughs> he's like, I said, you sold yourself? <laughs> He's like, I have no, I have no other way to say it. So I got tickled. I was like, and he said, so now I'm like, well, now what? <laughs> so he said, I remembered about a week or two before I had worked out and I'd put a pair of shorts in the back of my truck because I had changed clothes. He said, so I go behind the church bell because I didn't want to say anything to the pastor. He said, I grabbed the shorts and said, look, I need them in it. He said, I go behind the church. He thinks he's back preparing himself for the mission. Well, he, because he's like, well, I didn't want to say anything because we're, we're, on, a, we're on a mission here. Yeah. And I'm not going to say, 
Cause I, I, I pooped my pants. Yeah, I, as a man, I was too embarrassed to say, hey, I just pooped in my pants. <laughs> and he said, I mean, <coughs> full, just. <laughs> and he said, I'm, I didn't. He said, I was thinking, I wonder if this church building has cameras or whatever. <laughs> so he strips down, put the shorts on. That's why he sent me the picture, because he was like, there's a story here. Because he had shorts on. Well, how would I know that? So, uh, so I say all this to say, so they go over there. Have the meeting. But he said when they got over there, it was all about, you know, these these noises we heard and all the things about this house happened when, when her sister moved in and well she was on drugs and so the other pastor, he got into their life. He's like, Well, are y'all on drugs now? Well, it got quiet. And, uh, and you hear a lot he, of things when you're. Well, that's what he said. He's like, you know, if you're all on drugs, you'd probably think your house is demon possessed. <laughs> you're hallucinating. Yeah. And yeah. So he wound up getting to Jesus, and it was a great story. But so then he said, but you know, I just thought to myself, is this not spiritual warfare? Because I thought here he is sharing this. He's like, I didn't feel bad. I'm in good shape, and he's like, I don't know why that happened. Other than some kind of spirit, I said. That, I find that, it interesting that you're comparing somebody being in good shape to their lower bowel tract. Well, I'm what, just what does saying, that have to do with anything? If you had people anything, in good shape can poop in their pants. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was weird. I just thought maybe it was some kind of <laughs> spiritual warfare. <laughs> You know? or, or a bad crawfish. I, you know, I don't he know. He hadn't eaten. He had fasted for two days. Oh, well, maybe what, that was what it. I'm saying? Where, what, how, why did that happen? I was like, well, were you nervous that you were going over there? I said, maybe you were subconsciously nervous. Because you say, Dad, you get, you go speak somewhere. A lot of times you'll get the, the pain will hit you. You know, you're kind of preparing oh, for yeah. warfare. Yeah. So maybe that was what it was. What a I story. don't even know why I told you. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, that's but, a pretty wild story. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it all ended well. The people were led well, to Jesus. Well, yeah, well, except that part. Yeah. And uh, I mean, because he was embarrassed. But, yeah. I, but I did think he was humble enough to say, I mean, he was doing something good yeah. for the Lord, but he's like, I don't know why that happened. And it wasn't like a. But you know, we did, you, you, when you told that story, it reminded me of when we built our house out in Calhoun, which is over 20 years ago now. We're not in it anymore. But. We had a house church that was meeting, and so we went in the house before we moved in. It's just the studs are up, you know. And I had Smith come over because he was my mentor. And our house church, we wrote scriptures all through the house on the concrete, you know, on the studs of the walls. I had everybody put their favorite verse. The kids were a part of it. Then I had Smith have a prayer over this house because because I wanted the house dedicated to ministry. And I said, I want this house to be a place where we lead people to Christ, our family's strong and secure. And so it's just it's just boards and, you know, concrete, but it was a home to Lisa and I. So I've never heard of it before. I you know, I'd never I just thought I thought of it. But it it turned out to be a blessing because a lot of great things happened. But I think it's because we were saying God use this play. This is yours because it's not well, ours. I know I, I normally don't play it up too much because there's a lot of uh, false prophets and all going out there. But when the Apostle Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So it, we have this power that God has, but he uh, reminds us, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You say, well, what would that entail? Well, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the ruler's authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So don't ever, we, we don't need to get to a situation and kid ourselves that the unseen demons, you see what they, well, the there's havoc, a hierarchy of you it, see yeah. the havoc that they wreak you say, but, oh, it is real. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I could tell you some wild stories about things I've seen and heard. Tell us. And, well, I'm, I'm just That's giving you this word. Podcast, huh? Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Why would you need it? So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand, uh, to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth around your waist. You're like spiritual warfare where your 
you're, you're, the Apostle Paul was saying, they're there. The demons are there throughout yeah. Jesus' stay on the earth. It was one, one bunch of demons after the other. You know what I'm saying? Well, and we talked about this <clears throat> a few podcasts. You couldn't see them running around like little demons, but you could see the uh, havoc they were wreaking. Well, and that's, you know, Hollywood has made it seem like a fiction yeah. now. So, but you're right. And, and remember, we talked about in the podcast about prayer. A, a while back that that he closes that section with three verses about prayer. Yeah. Meaning that that's part of your whole armor you are and, correct. and part of your you know spiritual warfare to be able to deal with that. So prayer is a big part of that. Remember we read in Romans where Romans, I think it's Romans eight, where it says that, you know, when the, the spirit interprets our hearts to God, I mean, there's yeah. something that happens in prayer yep. that, that really is, is powerful. So well, I think the, what, I, what I, the point I was getting at is, most of these views about a man of God, because because Jesus spent a lot of time talking about turn the other cheek and be humble and love your enemies. You know, blessed are the Pray yeah, them. blessed are the poor in spirit right. and the meek. And like right. Revelation says, we're sheep to be slaughtered. So people are like, well, that's just so weak a view on man. But but he also, you know, when you think about the resurrection. I mean, if you made a movie about, and, and I've told you all this before, but I've always wanted to make a movie about Revelation, where all these Christians, you know, get slaughtered, just like a, no, a normal movie, and you know this warfare, and and they're just overtaken by the Romans and and different persecutors, and then at the end they all come back, yeah, and and they're like indestructible, imperishable. They don't. They don't need any weapons. Yeah. They're just walking around. They're like, what, what's wrong with these people? They're. They're. You. You can't. Well, somebody'd say, well, that's the dumbest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> but that's what is going to happen. Yeah. I mean, we're coming back, and and we are humble because we want to try to introduce Jesus to people. But don't don't mistake that for not being powerful. I'd like to be able to do the lasers out of the eye thing like Superman. I just think if you were indestructible, <clears throat> you really wouldn't even have to fight. No. You, you're just... Battles won. Well, you, you see what I mean? I love it's it. It's like, what can be done to you? All right. Well, we're out of time. We're going to go over to Unashamed. I, I got a couple of verses, a couple more verses uh, I want to share about this idea of a prude in the next podcast. Uh, we're going to have a, a guest on who has a podcast called The Pursuit of Manliness. So, I mean, that's the ultimate uh, conversation to have. So we'll talk more about it uh, in overtime in the next podcast. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.